So uh, we're talking about sub epics. Um, so I think Annabelle, you responded to at least one of the issues. Um, I didn't look at anything for my this morning yet. So any other things you wanted to start off with before I blabber away? Um, <clears throat> no, I know you talked about possibly having some designs ready um, and thinking about sub epics, but I don't have designs. And the comment I did post was more about how we're structuring this and whether we want to do it the way that we currently have it set up. So sure. if you can, if you want to go ahead and talk, you can. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just motivate the problem a bit. Um, and then, and then go from there. So let me share, let me pull up some things that I think are relevant. Uh, right. Okay. So share my screen. Okay. So this is the, roadmap we have uh, as I posted in Slack yesterday. Um, make this a little bit smaller so it's maybe easier um, to see. And so we have a we have a lot of things we want to do with portfolio management. And the two big areas that <clears throat> um, in talking with customers and in in um, in what they want which is really interesting is sort of like, it's something that I don't think we ourselves are using a lot or would use is being able to <clears throat> uh, break down work to, to uh, uh, sub, sub whatever. So, so it's called work breakdown structure, at least in some areas, right? So you're breaking down the work into uh, sub scopes. Um, and so we have the concept of sub epics and sub issues and various issues that talk about those things. So that, that's one area of portfolio management that we could pursue. And then the other area is capacity management or, or pen planning with capacity. And then, so I'll talk about why capacity management is not here, but um, capacity management would be things like, you know, uh, this month you have 30 points of capacity and then next month you have 35 and then you, you, you store those numbers somewhere and then uh, GitLab becomes smart and also tells you that, um, uh, you should really have 40 points or something like that based on how you performed in the past and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so that's um, all well and good. Um, I don't know if we would use that ourselves. I, I, I pinged a couple of folks. I think Sean, you said that you would at least use one feature where you put a number on the top of a milestone list board. Um, but beyond that, um, actually when I talked with customers, uh, they, they also say they want this, but they, they definitely want the work breakdown structure more. And so that's why um, I, I, I've broken that down, um, not, not intended, um, uh, on, on what ep sub epics would be. And then some, some I think, pretty obvious uh, follow ups to that. Um, so, so let's go into sub epics in detail today, but I wanted to mention that, that larger context. And then uh, in particular, um, yeah, so there's several ways to break down work. And so we're not really reinventing the wheel. You can take issues and have sub issues. And I think we would use that for at least uh, the product issue and the front end and back end issue. So that's uh, an obvious thing that we would use, but it's not clear to me how GitLab would use sub epics, I guess. Um, actually, I, I would use it myself because, you know, all uh, like these would all be under a sub epic. Right, right now they're they're separate, and then, or sorry, like these three are are talking about sub epics, so they would be under one epic. So I guess I would use them. So I, I take that back. But um, right now, at least we're managing it without it. And then um, I don't see us. Well, maybe in the future we would use it. I, I don't know. Let me take that back. But for sure, I know that large organizations that have a lot of work and they want that visibility rolled up. Um, that this is where it's coming from. Um, and then, so I have these three epics that I've scoped out and, and have some high level functionality to talk about those. And then the, these, these are follow up functionality, uh, including this one that are pretty, that are pretty straightforward. Um, like auto close epic is, is, um, straightforward epic swim lanes and so on and so forth. Um, and then one other exercise that I did um, that I put in the I think it's linked here. 
that uh, Yob started asking me to do. So it's sort of like, um, again, it's not very, it's not very, uh, you know, new or anything spectacular, but this concept of a flow. And so if you do, you know, there's a bazillion ways to do sort of product planning and figure out what features to build. And this is one way that people like to do things, which is just to, um, instead of creating just individual features, uh, create a flow, a potential flow, or, you know, in talking with customers and talking with users, figure out how people would use your product and, 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 and figure out a flow. So for example, um, when I worked in a non-remote company, I, I did a similar exercise and we had a brainstorming session about what do you do as a flow to get to work, right? And so it would be radically different now, right? Because it would be wake up, brush my teeth, eat breakfast, um, take a, you know, take public transport or, or you know, ride a bike, take an Uber. Uh, and then may, maybe if I'm really good, I, I, I would go to the gym at the, at, I had a gym at my, at my workplace. And then they also had like sort of crappy free breakfast. So then the breakfast would be at, at the workplace. So then, then you would just like the exercise would be about outlining that flow. And then so the flow of going to work. And then so once you have that flow and then you look at oh, which features you, you have and you don't have, and then you would prioritize certain features. And so certain features you would have workarounds, right? So, so like, again, the example would be you know, do you really need to brush your teeth? So it depends on your standard and your, and, your, and, and, and your hygiene standards. So maybe you don't need to brush your teeth because that's okay. And so for some people, that's really critical. So, um, so you would knock that out as a, as a feature not to build um, and stuff like that. So sort of a silly example, but <clears throat> this flow is trying to capture this <clears throat> specific scenario. Um, and then so what I've shown here is, you know, a product manager, creates the high level ideas, turn them into small, smaller ideas, works with the various teams to scope out those ideas, um, and then turns it into a roadmap and you execute and you track it. So um, we have most of that. We can do most of that inside GitLab, <clears throat> but certain things we can do, for example, is, is sub epics or, or um, if you wanted to break down <clears throat> high level ideas into small chunks, start scoping out work. We can't do that right now. Um, so that's in this flow, this is a gap. Um, um, estimating effort, we can barely do that. Um, uh, viewing the uh, plan scope and effort. And so when you wanna plan that type of work inside a board, which I think is, is a great way to do it, you can't really view it from an epic level. And so Pedro had this idea to do swim lanes um, and use epics for that um, so I think that's a great idea so so this was something that yo asked me to do just in general um, but what's really interesting as I was working through sub epics um, I had a couple of flows and it eventually just became this one big flow and then so everything is more or less all these <clears throat> future epics are captured in here um, so it's something that you can look at and, and, and ask like why don't we have that why don't we don't have a certain thing and so on and so forth so again, back to capacity management, that is not here, right? <clears throat> so if you want to plan, say, across teams, right? So if you have uh, a higher level of planning and you have teams that have less people or more people and you need to borrow team members or somebody goes on vacation, this flow doesn't capture it, right? Because it is um, estimate effort and plan scope and effort and milestones accounting for available capacity this is um, all in here and it's not like you can imagine this in this particular flow you would take this item and break it down further and then account for capacity more using the tool more specifically but it's almost like you need a spreadsheet here to do that right now um, and it's not accounted for so i wanted to call that out specifically um, what is not here another thing that's not here is like doing the actual work like that's you know that the create team is more or less involved in that so um you view your plan, you do your actual work, and then you track the progress. So doing your actual work is a, is a flow, right? And so that day-to-day -day thing or, or, um, or even uh, what we're responsible for, like using assignee lists on a board and seeing it day-to-day -day what people are working on, that's not really here. Um, so that's something, again, that's absent from this flow, and we would you know, chat about it or talk about it in, in separately. 
So questions and comments on the motivation and high level things before we actually dig into at least what I think would be a good vision for sub epics. Uh, none from me. Okay. Um, so, so, so for sub epics, um, so, so let me step back. So we have sub issues and sub epics. Um, so to me, there's, um, one, one interesting issue that, um, I can bring up is, is this one. So, so, uh, you can, I'll send this issue um, in some of this discussion. I'll link it in the Slack channel. So uh, here. And so you folks can read it if you care. Um, but basically, this issue was Mark saying like, oh, why don't we just make epics a subtype of issues, right? And so he said like, if we do that, then everything will be simpler. It will be easier to code, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So I think I even mentioned you, Sean, at some point. So you might have got pinged on this, um, but you probably said like I don't need to answer or something like that. Um, but did I ping you, Sean? Yeah, I did. So, um, but basically, the go ahead, Sean. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say I saw it, but um, yeah, I, nothing. I think well, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where I think. It's self-evident. <laughs> you don't well, need to jump in. No, I, I just, I just think, like, you know, I think you did a great job of responding, and like, I don't want to like muddy the waters if um, okay. sure. that works for people. Yep. So not a problem. So um, this issue, I, I really like this issue. You know, I was annoyed because it's like, oh no, I have to answer one of these issues again and, and justify like our thinking. But then um, I really enjoyed it because it challenged our thinking and it really solidified. Um, at least my thinking I want to share with you folks, which is, um, yes, we made an epic and we didn't call it an issue uh, a long time ago, right? Uh, a year ago, more than a year ago now. And so did we make a mistake? And so, so I argue in, in all these paragraphs here, the only mistake that we may, might have made is that we might have called an, an epic an epic instead of like a group issue, right? So that's the only change that, that might have been a bad choice. Um, but other than that, what we did is we created an abstraction at the group level. And then as you know, I, 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 in speaking with Sean, and then I think Yarka was the first person that worked on this, right, Sean? Um, she said that, you know, all, we had to reinvent all these sidebar things. So this is I'm repeating this for benefit of, of Annable, um, for, for the, at the group level, because unfortunately when we created issues or the, I guess the issuable type or whatever it's called in code only applies at the project level and it doesn't apply at the group level. So when we invented epics, we had, we're still reinventing all these things at the group level. So we have an abstraction at the group level and we have an abstraction at the project level. And then, so I, I strongly think that we need these two abstractions. We need these two types of scoping of work at the group level and at the project level. Um, and so we didn't, we didn't waste any time because we, we, we had to arrive at that anyways. We had to do that work. And now the next stage beyond that work is at the project level, should we, we probably should have a concept of nested uh, subgrouping of, or, or sub nesting of, of issues and same at the group level. So group level. So uh, again, some nesting of objects for the group level, and then we're just going to call them sub epics for now. So if we, if we, chose to call them group issues in the beginning, we would probably, that may have been come easier because then we could have said like group issues versus project issues, but now we don't really have to make that difference. So the naming thing is, uh, I'm not too worried about that because we can just clearly say, oh, epics are a group level thing um, and issues are a project level thing. And then that's really clear in the documentation and when we talk with users and in the product. And then when we do nesting, we do it at the group level and we also do at the project level and we have to connect them obviously. And then if you read through this issue, there's this concept about, oh, we have epics, so should we also have group issues? And the answer is probably, um, probably no, um, because we'll just, we don't have to create another object called a group issue. We'll just create an, a tier of epics that is um, at a lower tier. So we have, all epic functionality is at the ultimate tier. 
And then if we have certain functionalities we want to bring to lower tiers in the future, we'll still call it an epic, but we just won't have all the, the, the high level functionality there. So um, I think everything is still consistent. Um, but this is relevant to your point, Animal, um, which is how we want to do this type of um, abstraction. And so when I look at this picture, which is an awesome picture, by the way, Oh my goodness, that bug still hasn't been fixed. Um, yeah, did you see, sorry, this is a derail. Did you see Stan's uh, investigation and number of things that needed to be fixed for that? I, I saw, yeah, no, but this was like two weeks ago and he was like, oh, this yeah, is- Yeah, but he needed to fix like two libraries, a like, thing. Almost, GitLab Rails and something else. <laughs> so know? that's why it's still not, it's taking yeah, a okay. it's not trivial. <laughs> okay, okay, understood. So I'm not complaining. I mean, I, I, I complain a lot about a lot of things, but this is one of the things I can work through. Um, so uh, another quick question: What did you use to make this, Annabelle? Did you? Um, I just use Sketch. I don't have. Oh, okay. Anything. Okay. So one one of these days, I'm I'm gonna learn. Be before my previous job and and this job, I was I I, I was, was going to learn Sketch, but it didn't happen because it was two weeks. <laughs> um, um, Remind anyway. me, and I'll send you the YouTube videos I watched. <laughs> oh, okay. To 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 teach you Sketch. Okay. Yeah. yeah may, maybe one of these days I'll learn it. But um, yeah, this is exactly what I have in my mind, like in terms of um, the substructure. And I think what you were saying is that for users, if we present to them this side of like a theme and an initiative, then it's easier for them to understand. Is, is that like, I don't want to mischaracterize, so why don't I let you jump in and sort of explain what you're trying to communicate here? Yeah, I was trying to wrap my head around just if we just keep on having sub epic under sub epic under sub epic, we end up with this hierarchy that doesn't really mean as much as it should. It's not a pyramid anymore. It's just like a straight vertical line. Um, so I was just looking at other agile things and I, full disclosure, I took this pretty much straight from Atlassian because they have just a ton of documentation. Um, but I, I know we don't want to get bogged down with terminology and force users to use this very specific agile structure. But at the same time, we talked about how sub isn't, a, isn't really the correct word to use for sub issues and sub epics. But when I see the um, original design where it just has, you know, your epic page and then it's got a list of epics, but you're already on your epic page. To me, it looks like, is it related? Are they nested? I have no idea. So I think getting the terminology down is, is a big part of this. And yeah, I just, I, I didn't. I don't know the use case where you'd need to have like 10 levels of epics because I don't think they're really right. epics anymore. If that's the case, you basically created yeah. this structure of your own, but yeah, no, right. I think that's a really good point because like, um, obviously we said sub epics isn't the word we want to use anyway, but like the word epic, like is as far as I'm aware, comes from the idea of stories and we don't call our issues stories. So there's kind of a confusion there, but like, right. You know, these themes and initiatives aren't, don't really belong with epics and stories like in a in a terminology sense either right like there's not really a, a clear conceptual um yep yep naming is all screwed up and yeah. i think i think i agree with annabelle that kind of assuming that this is what annabelle was saying that like punting and just saying you can just have like epics nested like groups doesn't really like solve that problem like you know it just um because there's already ways you can organize epics right like certainly by label um if nothing else. Um, so um, maybe it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'd just say like, you know, there's, 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 we definitely have different organizational things available to you. And I don't know which should be sort of rigid and which should be not rigid. But I think if we have two super flexible ones, we could just use labels. Right, so that was the, the design I was looking at. And I mean, it, it makes sense because it follows our other guidelines, but it didn't make sense to me looking at it. I was wondering if they were related epics. Right, right. So a couple of follow-up questions there. So you said it didn't make sense to have like 10 whatever, right? So do you mean 10 levels or 10 things across or both? Across unlimited. I think every level is just a collection of their children mm -hmm. and you can have unlimited in every single level. Right. But that's where it stops. Like you, 
if you have an epic and you have a sub epic, I don't know when that would ever happen. Like, unless you made a bunch of epics and realized that that's not the right level, you actually wanted an initiative. And in that case, that is kind of complicated. I don't know how you would right. transfer that, but I don't think a sub epic can really, I don't think an epic can be in an epic. Um, right. So, so yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't, um, that, that's why I, I agree with what you've drawn here. Well, I mean, it's self to me, this is what you've drawn, drawn here is, is self evident um, in that naming aside this, what you've drawn here is self evident in terms of the use case, right? So it's self evident in that, you know, this make GitLab the best project management tool. This could be, you know, this could be an OKR or, it can, you know, it could just be like, um, this is what the plan team or one of the things that the plan team is working on for, you know, Q3 of blah, right? And then it's going to be split up into this work and so on and so forth. So this is work breakdown structure 101. So this is self-evident and, and that's it, right? And so to me, the problem is how do we make a tool that makes it easy for people to break down their work and execute it on. So you have this vertical structure and then horizontally in time, you have to track it. So I think we all agree that this is self-evident and, and this makes sense. So is the concern that, is it more of a naming thing or is it more of a constraining the structure so that people are more clear on, on how to use things? I think it's both. I, I do think naming is important, but okay having some sort of guidelines instead of just being, you know, unlimited everything. Right. Because when you go to look at your epics list or something like that, it gets very complicated. Do you, are you looking at all your top level epics or are right. you looking at just all of them? And then, you know, depending on how many deep you go and we have this problem with subgroups is all of a sudden you, you can't really show the indentation anymore because it's gotten so exactly. deep that it's off the page. Not that that happens a lot, but it's just yeah. hard to visualize. So, so I totally agree with that. So, so that as a um, illustrative point is that to me, it's, it's quite obvious that this type of visualization is um, instantly more usable than to say this, right? Um, so one could, one could argue like, oh, when we design this, why don't we, we make the design like this? So to me, that's, um, that's relevant from a visual design perspective. Um, but I don't want that to uh, confuse our argument saying like um, in, in terms of the, the underlying structure, for example. So, so I don't want to, us to say that, oh, like this is a bad design. So therefore we shouldn't have a, a nesting structure. I, yeah. I think that that's what I'm trying to say. Like this, this like looks really confusing because I created it and it looks ugly, but this looks really clean and great. And so to me, this, is obvious and so we should have some nesting structure so i think we agree there but then i think where we have to arrive is that okay so if we agree that this is what we want then how do we design the feature and build it so that we have this level of thing and then so the concern here for me is um related to our discussion last week or two weeks ago with uh, boards is that do we start saying that now we have an issue, we have an epic, we have an initiative, and then we have a theme, right? So to me, the building that and the complexity of that, that seems really crazy, right? So having more constructs inside GitLab that, that um, more abstractions that are these three things that are first class citizens seems like a lot of complexity. And so the way I'd like to think of it is that this, everything down here, or at, well, there are issues, right? They're just project level abstractions. So getting back to my original discussion. And then these things here are group level abstractions, right? And then, so I don't have a great answer for you in that, like if I were to work on that assumption, then, oh, it would be natural to make epics of epics because that's what we already have and that's the iterative thing. Um, and then that would be confusing and then, um, or you can imagine a feature where you label it like Sean mentioned, but instead of using labels, you, you have some type of, um, you know, metadata that says like, this is at level one, this is at level two and, or you can have, uh, or you can name that particular epic. Like in addition to a title, it's like an epic type or, or something like that just to indicate theme initiative and epic. And then, or you can use templates like I talked about with boards last time, just to make drive home that, 
this is what we're presenting to the user instead of epics of epic. Because what I'm hearing is that that doesn't really make sense in epic of an epic. So, so I'll pause there. Um, oh, go ahead. Go on, Annabelle. No, you go ahead. Oh, um, yeah, I was, I was going to say, I've actually kind of forgotten what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense to have epics of epics, at least to me. Um, and I, I do see the complexity of, of trying to get a user to see that this is like something that you could do without it turning into a full blown Jira type product where I barely understood that when I had to use it at my old job. Um, so when you're starting with a bunch of epics like we have right now, what's the next step? If you realize at some point that you actually need to group those into an initiative and then possibly group those two initiatives into a theme, how do you go about doing that? I'm going to pause because my baby's sleeping. Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Like, you know, fundamentally, like, you know, so we have issues and we have ethics and we have the debate about like, what's the difference between issues and ethics. Um, one difference is that um, you, an issue can reference other issues, but it doesn't really contain them, whereas an epic explicitly contains um, issues. Right, and, this line is here already, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but if an epic can contain another epic, can it also contain issues? Can it like, you know, can it only contain epics of a particular level? Like you just mentioned now, Victor, like that's, if these things don't have like concrete names, it's quite hard for me to visualize what that actually means. Like, um, because I think there are sort of two, two aspects of tension here. So there's the, you give everything a name and you have this rigid structure and we don't want to go that far. We don't want GitLab to enforce your workflow, but we do want it to, you know, suggest a good workflow, right? Make it, make it easy, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then the second is sort of the Jira thing where you can customize Jira to basically do whatever you want, um, but then you need to have a lot of expertise in the product to understand how to do that because, um, you know, things can be structured however you want. <laughs> um, like, you know, that's the, the, the downside of it. That's the obvious, um, like, flip side of that from a product perspective. And to me, um, whatever we're calling these sub epics or parent epics or group issues or whatever we're calling them, that's the fundamental problem I see is that we, if we don't have a good name for them, it's quite, for me personally, it's quite hard to visualize what they mean because um, if they're just epics and sub epics, like they're just groups and subgroups, that just says to me, it's an arbitrary thing that you can nest and you can like have an epic containing another epic and containing these five issues. And then that other, the, the child epic contains like another five issues and another epic. And like, I don't really, I don't really, I, I get like how that works technically. I just don't really understand what you'd use it for. <laughs> like, you know, that, that might actually be easier to build than something else, but I don't, I find it quite hard to understand. Um, so I really like, even if we don't actually go with this, I really like this diagram and these names just because then it gives me sort of a concrete idea of like, okay, you'd use that for this. And like, you know, from issues down from here, we have tasks, which I don't know if we're going to talk about today, but that's also an interesting um, point to me. Yeah. yeah, the tasks were my idea for sub issues, which I also well, don't know that we get the idea. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have task we have task lists. That's what I assumed these were, but if, they were something else. Oh, they weren't actually, but I forgot about. No, that. I was going to say I much prefer those. Like task lists are kind of a, a hassle in a lot of ways, like from a technical. Yeah, they're not a first class citizen at all. Yeah, like and I, I much prefer the idea that these are like these individual issues that are tasks somehow, yeah. but I don't know exactly how that would work. Um, right. Yeah, that, that's kind of a derail because we're sort of um, supposed to be focused. No, it's it. related. I, I think it's a like. But a, it's, it's the same. It's the same question I have. It's the same like, issue and yeah. task. I feel like I understand the relationship a lot better than I do mm -hmm. with epic and sub epic, basically. So, right. So so. That, that that's where I'm leaning. I'm I'm so to me this. What 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 I'm envisioning is just replacing these words initiative with epic, and then this word theme with epic. And I think the what you two are saying is that that already is confusing to users. Or it's not as user friendly as we want it to be. Is that a good summary? 
uh, sorry, which way around is the confusing way around? <laughs> or uh, to me, this is obviously really clear, but I don't like this in the sense that to build initiative, initiative and theme, that takes a lot more work. Um, there's a lot more things to to think about. It's a more of a feature and so on and so forth. Right. From a, from a product and technical perspective, I don't think we want to go away and build a completely different thing called exactly. initiatives that are like epics, but behave slightly differently. But from exactly. a user perspective, I think it's quite useful to talk about them in this way so we can exactly. have a concrete, because I think the word sub epic, which I know you said you don't want to use is quite unopinionated, but I think mm -hmm. this does need to be a bit more opinionated than that, basically. Right, for, right. For me personally, like, you know, um, Annabelle might have the opposite opinion where for her it's like more sensible to just have this um, uh, epic or whatever you call it that can contain stuff and then it's up to you what it contains and how you structure those because that's more flexible to the user. Like, you know, this is just my, my opinion. So... So, so there's a lot there. So, so what I was trying to say is that the epic I'm proposing is that these boxes are all fundamentally the same thing, you know, from a product perspective, code perspective, blah, blah, blah perspective. So you get all the benefits of flexibility, you know, it's consistent. Um, and then we have to be really smart at designing the lines so that we don't make it too complicated. And also the lines are designed in such a way that it makes it a really user-friendly experience. So that even though that they're all epics in name, like they're all the same color, the shade of turquoise or whatever, um, but immediately when somebody sees this, they can, they can picture this in their, in their brain without the words initiative and theme, or they can you know, fill in the blanks automatically. So that um, in, in the sense that in, in the same sense that when people look at issues, they, they might just call them stories or whatever, or, or um, you know, well, actually, no, that's a bad analogy. But but well, you, you, can, you can even call our issues now tasks, right? Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Not at the moment. Exactly. So the the same discussion with tasks, actually. If we if we've called these, if we have sub issues in the future, I would call them still issues, but you just have UI to add additional lines, um, and then. My contention is it's the we need to have super really good design, visual design, functional design, interaction design, so that people understand the uh, the structure immediately, and they can apply it to the concept of parent-child relationships, and then use it for their specific needs. And so, same for here, parent-child. And so, my proposal would be that an epic can have any number of children epics and any number of children issues. So in my, exam, in my generic structure, this line can also go to any number of issues. Um, and, and you would have pretty much no constraints. Um, maybe it could even go backwards, but I, I, like, I, I always want to push toward less constraints and allow the user to be able to do anything they want, but then we build guardrails or templates, or maybe we introduce certain constraints, um, or or we we put like air, like not like warning messages to say like something like you know this epic is already pointing to that epic like like or you have like this weird circular relationship and make a warning in the UI rather than to block them. So so that's where I'm leaning toward. Um, but anyway, anyway, back back so to my. Point. So this would be like issue relationships now, except these are special epic relationships, basically. Like right, this. right, yeah. Because, so, we, because we've already talked about this with issue relationships before. Like we added related issues, and we said like in the future we have the possibility to add, um, you know, blocking issues or parent issues or child issues as a type of relationship. Exactly. We haven't done that yet, but you know that was that was always like I think we talked about. Yeah. So your idea is to basically have the same for epic to epic relationships and each epic can have epic relationships and issue relationships exactly yeah maybe i should have started with that and it was it was like no no i think i think the conversation actually helped me understand that so annabelle okay. like how do you feel about that yeah i think i think that makes sense to let people do what they want to do with gitlab um it's it's slightly more confusing to have issues and epics on the same level underneath an initiative and i'm still using these words because it's easy. But Victor, it was your idea to take our existing epic and 
that would now be, or the initiative would be what our Epic currently is. Yes. So, so, so the example would be a customer comes to us and say, we're on a tool that does blah. And then they give this, they give this PDF to us, or I want to implement this PDF and I'm picking a tool and I'm shopping on the market. Can GitLab do it? And then we say, yes, it can. And then we explain to them that, you know, the best practice within GitLab is that you would implement this box as an Epic. You would implement this box as an Epic and Epic. And then you would, you know, create an Epic within an Epic and, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's how I would, this to me is like a, a, a model, a work breakdown structure model of what a team wants. And then let's give them an, a solution implementation. And then it would be uh, epics of epics. And yeah, so maybe I should, maybe like sub epics in name is confusing, but I was totally thinking about relationships. Um, but by, by having relationships, you don't have, they're, they're all the same type of object. And by default, that's more, I don't know if it's more confusing, but um, uh, to a certain degree, you need, you, you, you can't just, like I, I can imagine a, a feature where you have a template and it would be like a new initiative and then you, you click that and then it would create for you one epic and it would have like five sub epics populated and maybe some of the issues would be populated as well. Like that, that to me is, is a way to, to address, um, like how would people use this? It's too confusing and stuff like that. Yeah, sorry. I'm just trying to think of that one. So are you, are you thinking that we would still have unlimited, um, ep uh, epics? So like that's where, um, I, I can be convinced otherwise. And, you know, I, I would, argue with you forever is sort of like emoji and then I'll let you in after like 10 comments. Um, but to me, that's, that's really something that I, I've worked with Pedro a lot on. Like to me, and this is, again, it's to me, it's totally analogous with the, uh, the voting up and down on emoji thing or, or the thumbs up, thumbs down. Like what's wrong with letting somebody put like 10 epics forever, like horizontally or vertically, like, um, maybe like we don't need to like like you know they're not children they're they're adults and using software and so i i like and pedro would be like oh no that's a poor user experience you shouldn't do that and so i'm arguing i, I see the argument both ways but i'm arguing from the fact that we should trust users to use the the, the product as sensitively as they would um adding additional I, constraints is a lot more work from a product perspective it, it adds more complexity and that even if we were to add constraints um, in certain situations, I would argue more for it wouldn't be a hard blocker, but there would be some type of UI that warns you that you're, you're doing it someplace in a, in a way that's really crazy and it's not typical. We could even say like, you know, this is not the best practice, read this blog post, or it might break in the future. So, something like that versus like a hard, like we limit you to 10 sub epics per epic, something like that. Right, I'm not against I'm not, and I also wouldn't assume that the users are going to go crazy. Um, definitely horizontally, there should be unlimited because that just makes sense. Vertically, uh, I think that just allowing people to do that is going to be more confusing. Um, and you know, having constraints usually is a good thing for the user experience and in life, really. But <laughs> I worry that. Well, can can you give an example of why that would actually be helpful? Like. Well, I think it would help you think through a little bit before just creating a ton of issues and then ending up in this, just being bogged down by a number of the same sort of, just a pile of ethics and issues. And then you're trying to make those relationships after the fact rather than thinking it through first. And again, I'm not saying the users would do that, but so, so it's, it'd be a lot easier to get into that state. Yeah, so Annabelle, I think I, think I get where you're coming from and I think I get it. So. Can I just use my own analogy to see if I've understood it? Um, so if I go back to the issue relationships thing, so if we forget we have FX at all, and you just say you have relationships between issues, and we have this um, child issue thing that I mentioned before. So one thing about that was that, like, you know, if we just let you add child issues, there's no constraint there. You can't have something be a child issue of two issues, but it can always be a child issue of another issue. And so you can easily have cycles or you can just have like a thousand issues in a project each of which is a child issue of the one before and you have this giant chain of like 
parent to child to you know to <laughs> grandchild to great grandchild to whatever it's like a um, google google developer interview question <laughs> yeah and that's obviously like you know like if you ever wanted to so like because the way related issues work is we only display them in um at the moment anyway we only display them in the immediate parent and child context that that's kind of okay um and again we don't have this feature but if we did it this this would be one way we could do it but if we ever wanted to display this in a way that showed you the overall structure we would need to introduce some constraints so that you can't create a constructor so the, or some some kind of guardrails like victor mentioned earlier so that you can't just create something that's ridiculous and doesn't display properly because if it doesn't display properly then your structure probably doesn't make sense right is that is that uh am i understanding your concern here correctly yeah yes exactly and again i'm not i'm not not totally against it either i'm just trying without doing any actual designs yet i'm just trying to think it through and i couldn't easily think of a a page where i could see that kind of structure where all of a sudden you have just a vertical chain. Yeah. And I think I, I, I don't, you know, I, I haven't thought this through enough to know how much weight to put on that, but I definitely agree that it's a concern because if we don't have those constraints, then it makes adding any visualization like this afterwards really hard um, because we don't know that it will even work. We'll have to test a bunch of edge cases. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll probably spend a bunch more time working on those edge cases down the line on the front end and on the UX side to like, you know, make them display in a sensible way when really we're not sure if those are things that you, we want to encourage anyway. Um, and if those are things that really make sense from a um, user perspective to, to, right. to do. Yeah, there, I, think, I think there's various shades of gray there that I think we can argue like, as we get there individually, um, like design decision one by one, like like number of verticals, like what, how would you address that? Um, my extreme opinion, like, or a extreme opinion, which I may or may not subscribe to, is I don't care if they put ten and like things run off the page, then you're just using the product incorrectly. I'm not going to spend all this time to build all these features to hold your hand. So that, that's one extreme opinion and probably something that I would be more uh, subscribed to would be like, oh, after like the sixth one or whatever, like you have some warning text or maybe it, like you hide the add button, right? After like the seventh one. And, yeah, um, but you can still add it, but it, it hides it or, or something like that. Just, to, make just to jump in there, we do actually have a constraint on subgroups at the moment anyway, right? Right. Like, like, and, 20 or something. Yeah, I, I heard that somewhere, yeah. But, but I, I don't even think that there's like, is there any, I, I never tried myself, but is there any UX that actually prevents that? Like, uh, I think it's a, like, it's at least a backend constraint. Like it won't let you create There's it. like a banner message that says error probably if you. Yeah, you just, you just can't create it. Right. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, if, that, if that's just like a pure performance thing, I'm like, oh, yes, then we'll just build it. But to me, that's, that, yeah. So, so that, uh, yeah, I made my point already. Um, this is a very minor technical point, but I'll just mention it now while I'm thinking about it. Um, another thing is that subgroups only work on Postgres. They don't work on MySQL. And if we do um, unopinionated, you can nest however you want. It will be the same there for the same reason. Um, but that shouldn't be a blocker because um, we are really heavily pushing people to use Postgres um, for a bunch of reasons. Um, one of which is that supporting two databases this is quite hard a lot of the time. So, so <laughs> Quite a question about that, actually. You said um, subgroups are not supported by MySQL, right? Is that what you said? Yep. And is, so I have no idea how subgroups are implemented, but my understanding with related issues and, and similar, like this would be quote unquote related ethics, um, but there will really be like parent child relationships. Um, aren't you just storing like pointers in the database? Uh, Why is this? Yeah, so actually, let me, let me clarify that. If, if you only want to know, so this is like what I was talking about earlier. If you only want to know the immediate parent or child, we can do it in both. If you want to know the hierarchy, um, we need a feature in sub, uh, Postgres called uh, uh, recursive common table expressions, um, mm -hmm. which is, um, uh, I think MySQL does have something equivalent for it, but not on all the versions we support. Anyway, okay. basically it lets you write a recursive SQL query that says like, okay, this is a parent of this, so you can, 
keep going up the tree to get parents. Um, okay, but, so it makes it really easy to to do the, to that type of logic. Without well, and performant as well. Um, okay, is the other thing, but. So you don't have to do that logic in the app code. In yeah, this is this is this is kind of a a slight derail. But the the point I was making there was like um, that that basically depends on whether we ever think we, we, whether we ever think you will want to see the whole structure or whether you only want to see the immediate up and down mm, of whatever part of the structure you're looking at. And I think because you know this this image that we've been looking at for like half an hour looks nice to me, and yep. I think there is definitely value in being able to see that whole structure at once. That like yes, for sure. Um, you know, maybe not even the whole structure, but certainly a few levels down because maybe you wouldn't want to see all the tasks at this level, but maybe you could zoom in or something on um, a particular thing to go see tasks. But I think there is definitely value in this. And if we work ourselves into a situation where we can only do the up and down immediately view, you sort of lose some of that. Although from the way you've described it in the issue, like the sort of general high level issue where you've talked about the different steps, um, it is very much talking about one step to the next step. So maybe, maybe the idea is that sort of like, you know, I am concerned with like this level, the level above the level below. Right. Um, the, my manager is concerned with the, the three levels like offset right, right, above right. that and yeah. so on. Like maybe, maybe that does work. I don't know, but these are, these are just things I'm thinking. They're not particularly constructive contributions. Yeah, no, no, this is, I think this would be next steps and I'd really rely on, on our design team to, to figure that out. Um, but, but the, at least, you know, the cursory thing that I thought about was that when you're on a given epic, such as this one, you can see everything downstream, if that's the right word. And you can't see anything above you except the parent. And then if you wanted to see things above you, you have to go to that parent. Um, so that's my design. And I don't like, that's definitely not going to be the final design. There's going to be probably other ways to look at it. Or so equivalently, if you're at this black box, you can see everything. So this would be an epic. If you're in this dark green box, you can see everything down below, but you would not be able to see another initiative in this thing or you would just see the pointer to this, um, but you have no visibility to this. So that that's my way of designing it um, in a way that I think is sane and covers most use cases that make sense. Um, but but to me, just just I, I think we should in at least hopefully in the next six minutes, we can agree on the structure and then we can, the next steps will be more about the visual design, which I think drives the functional design in this particular case. So, so coming back to all that, so Annabelle and Sean, I, I think you're starting to uh, agree that we, we want to implement this or the design will be relationships essentially. Um, and these will all both be, these three will, will still be of the epic, of the type epic. Is that, is that accurate assumption? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to reserve the right to change my mind. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's GitLab. Because <laughs> this is being put on YouTube, so I'm just going just gonna to put it there. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think in general, that probably, I ethics, think what I'm leading to, sorry, go on. No, sorry. Our ethics are a type of issue though, aren't they? Or no? They're not. So they're, well, I, I don't know what they're, how they're implemented in detail, but they're, they're just an abstraction at the group level, right? So, so it's an object that's scoped at the group level. So, you, so an epic, there's no such thing as a project epic. There's only such things as group epics. And within an epic, you can attach any number of issues to that epic, provided that those issues, um, their projects are under the structure, uh, nesting structure of that group. So if that's right. confusing enough, that's... <laughs> yeah, um, like a couple of reasons that they're not issues. Uh, basically, it's it's much easier and more sensible to build them, at least the decision we made at the time was, and I still think this makes sense, to build them adding the features that are like issues rather than removing the features that aren't like issues. Um, because, right, like, for right, instance, right. you can't have a merge request close in Epic, for instance. Um, that doesn't really make sense. Um, you can't have a branch related to an epic because an epic doesn't live in a project and there aren't group level repositories. Um, you can't spend time on an epic. You can only spend time on issues, blah, 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 blah. 
there's, there's a bunch of like small features where it's much easier conceptually to like add the ones we want rather than remove the ones we don't want because it's very easy to miss out the ones we don't want. Okay. That's so, not to say that we couldn't make them exactly like group issues if we decide that that's the way to go. It would just require some quite a bit of rework. Okay, I think I thought that just because they look almost exactly the same, which is a good, probably a good thing. So in that case, the, I do think that the, le the three levels in this diagram, I don't know why I'm pointing, um, the three <laughs> levels in this diagram above the issues are all types of epics. That makes sense okay. to me. Right, um, so yeah, that's my proposal. Like we, we, we're inventing these lines, but we're not inventing new boxes is, is my proposal in a nutshell. Yeah, I, I, I like that way of putting it. I also think that we should consider constraints on what the lines can do. I mm -hmm. like, I'm pretty sure you studied math at some point, right, Victor? Like, <laughs> at some point, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think this should just be a graph. I think this should be a directed graph. A, a, a DAG. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, well, I mean that that's that that comes back to the the, the thing that we talked about earlier, like uh, the 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 warning things and like to me, uh, if there's a technical reason to to maintain that it's a a cyclic directed, then obviously we do it. But to me, there's no convincing user reason. And then right now, but you know, Annabelle will probably have one, and so then I'll be convinced. But that's I I don't want to create. Things for the sake of creating them and, and until it's, it's clear we need to do it because yeah we, we, we can definitely talk about that but basically when I say directed Annabelle I mean that like so you have an epic this line that, goes in one direction that line goes down that line goes down that line then can't go back up like you know to another epic that's part right. of that one like you know you can't just sort of go in whatever direction you want you can only go in one direction um, right so from the bottom up everything only belongs to one parent, right? Yes. Every but parent also, can have many children, but each child only has one. Parent. Yes, but also the line only goes up um, one level at a time, if that makes sense. So um, you're saying an initiative I, can't have a bunch of issues and epics? Uh, not exactly. Uh, it would probably be easiest if I draw a diagram. Hang on, give me a sec. <laughs> on the screen. Uh, I was just going to draw it on a piece of paper. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't Zoom have some thing? Um, Probably, yeah. Um, so I think Sean is saying this. You can see this, right, Animal? Yeah. OK. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So there's an arrow on each line, which means that. Um, so can you see that OK? Barely. Okay, so. fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Basically, basically, what I'm saying is you can't have an arrow going up. Well, you, you can't have an arrow from this epic from inherent sub epics going to theme, right? Right. So what I'm saying is, um, but even if there was a different, even if there's another initiative, right? So like right. inherent sub epic start and due dates can't have a child epic of another initiative um, because it's at a different level. Although because they can only have one. Um, parents. Yeah, I think uh, that, that's, I think that's already solved by that. I yeah, think. that constraint already uh, satisfies that. Yeah, uh, but but even that, like I what I, I put pretty much those two uh, constraints, which I think covers everything, right? Having only one parent and having n number of children. Um, I I put those constraints in one of the I think in the back end issue, but even that I think I could argue could be relaxed if it it's easier to do so I, I think that's something that we can talk more specifically during implementation um, yeah i think i think this conversation but, comes comes closer to implementation than we need now exactly. but now i just think that the, the, the design, design is that we need some constraints on here it's not a complete free-for-all right 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 yeah but but again my, my point being is that let's, that can be design-led yeah exactly the design should drive the, the implementation the Design led, but then performance reasons like you, like MySQL, blah blah blah, that will also back and form it. Um, so uh, I'm fine with those. So um, going forward, um, as I start mm -hmm. trying to make a design for this, is there a word that we would like to use to avoid more confusion for these different levels? Like, should I be doing theme initiative epic issues, or do we just want everything to become a sub epic? I think it should, everything should become a sub epic if we if we agree. I mean, you can disagree, but if we agree, all these boxes should be epics. Um, 
I'm just using the word sub epics. Maybe I could rename everything and just call them epic relationships or parent child relationship epics. And that's a mouthful. Yeah, I kind of like epic relationships more than okay. like an epic, like in this example, an initiative is both a sub epic and an epic. Mm, okay. Okay. Right. So I kind of like the idea of just focusing on the relationships, but I don't know if that's going to be super clear once we try and explain it to people. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, Let's call it, let's call it sub epics then, <laughs> just to, because other people won't understand it. I think you're right. If you don't well, we could, we could always, we could always come up with a couple of ways of explaining right. it and see if, like, you know, any of Okay, then, then let's, let's do something crazy. We can always change this. It's GitLab. Let's just, I'm just going to, after this call, I'm just going to hang up and I'm just going to rename every, at least titles. I'm not going to go into the bodies of issues because it's going to take me forever. I'm just going to go to all the epics and, and issues I have regarding this. And just change it to call them relationships, and then that's it. Or maybe call it parent-child relationship, um, because apparently it wasn't obvious to you two, and that's that's a failure in communication already. And then and then we'll go from there. And then, um, but for for Annabelle, I think what you can do is, ju is just work on visual designs and, and interaction designs, um, with the assumption that we're not creating new objects inside GitLab, there's still all going to be epics, right? There's, it's going to be an epic page and that's it. But how will that, how did, how are things visualized there, whether it's on the roadmap, whether it's on the epic page, uh, whether it's on an issue where you can point to the parent, so on and so forth. That I think is all up to you on how you want to do that. Okay. Um, and there is still an order, right? Like roadmaps was, was sort of more in the future. Yes. Um, and well, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely in terms of priority. But I, I mean, none of this we were shipping tomorrow either. So, uh, but what, I, I'd like to start on on this work fairly soon, like the next iteration. But but you're totally right. Um, like like to me, I think the the next time we have a discussion, if you have some designs on like the epic page and then just rough ideas on the. Roadmap page, I think that would be great. Maybe, maybe, so let me take that back. Just the, the epic page, I think, would be great because um, I really like this visualization. So I'll, I'll, I'll shut up after saying this point. I really, oh my God, this red stuff is there. <laughs> I really hate this visualization um, because it just looks ugly. But to me, it's, it, it's, I, I guess it's useful. So maybe you'll come up with something that actually does look like this. Um, I think Dimitri created this one. Oh my God, I can't undo it anymore. Yeah, um, his design does look like the one that you, you sort of have. Right, yeah. So this one, Dimitri created, but this was without sub, like without thinking relationships. This was just one level, right? Mm -hmm. That was not in mind when we created. No, it was actually, I take that back. Um, so this is epic of epic, but I don't think Dimitri thought a lot about, you know, further nesting and how that would be articulated, the, the breakdown structure. Um, but go ahead and think about that. Go ahead and think about whether an epic should be allowed to have both, in this case, sub epics and issues. I, I think it, you sh we should allow it, but maybe you have some convincing design reason to disallow it. So, um, and so let's chat about that next time. Sounds good. All right. Anything else from Sean Animal? Nope. All right. Um, I will stop sharing and stop recording.